Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Jay, and this, quite obviously, is a police car. More specifically, it is the Ford Police Interceptor Utility. It's based on the Ford Explorer, and in today's Car Buzz unboxing reviews, I am going to give it a proper review for you today. I also want to thank the Palo Alto, California Police Department for letting me check this car out. Uh, I've really never been this up close to a cop car before. Uh, I have been pulled over many times. Well, not many, but a few. And, you know, I, I was always interested in learning more about them. And, and today I finally get a chance. But I also want to tell you right now that this is actually uh, considered a supervisor, uh, supervisor police car. What does that mean? It's driven by, you know, uh, sergeants, lieutenants, uh, even captains and police departments. And it's really considered to be sort of like a mobile headquarters for crime scenes. So this, this car, it's not used to actually arrest people. And you'll see why in a few minutes that you don't want to put criminals in the backseat. There's a very, very good reason why. So just checking out this interior here, you know, you have that big laptop. Uh, I promise you that is not for playing video games on. Now the exterior. So you have that big front bumper there. That's uh, obviously there to minimize any damage in like a high speed uh, crash. It can also be used to, uh, to uh, push over cars that have been flipped over. And you have these 18-inch uh, wheels, and they're kind of interesting because they're they're steel wheels, and they have these venting characteristics, excuse me, characteristic, characteristics, to uh, help cool the brakes. But this uh, utility uh, interceptor, it, it's not like the regular Ford Explorer you can buy. It, it has a lot of frame modifications. There's uh, heavy-duty uh, powertrain mounts reinforced subframe mounts, and there's even unique hubs and bearings. The front suspension has been modified, everything. Even the tires are, are, are unique. And unlike the regular Ford Explorer that you can buy at any Ford dealership, uh, they, these police cars are not built on the same production line. It's not like the police departments go to their local Ford dealer, buy an Explorer, and then trick it out like this. That's not at all the case. Um, when you see the interior here, you're, you're going to notice that like where the radio is on the center console, where that's normally where uh, the gear selector is, but it's in a different location right on the steering column. And that's something that has to be and can only be done by the factory. And this might just look like a plain uh, rear, you know, view to you, but what it's there's actually some hidden technology here, and it's called the surveillance mode tech. And it's basically uh, there's sensors in the rear here, and when they detect somebody coming from behind, when the police officer is sitting in the driver's seat, uh, the sensors will actually trigger for the driver's window to roll up and will lock the doors. The idea is, say, if a police officer is looking down, writing a ticket eating their lunch, and a, po a potential threat comes around to harm them, This that will actually save their lives. It's a really smart technology. Under the hood here, this is the very familiar 3.7 liter naturally aspirated V6. Uh, here it's tuned to produce 304 horsepower and 279 pound feet of torque. This is actually the same uh, V6 that you can get in the base level Ford Mustang, but like I said, it's been mo uh, further modified to better handle uh, uh, city pursuit, highway pursuit, etc. So let's get a better look at this interior here. As I mentioned before, along the center console, that's where the radio is. You have the laptop computer. Yeah, you know, can't miss that. That's, uh, that's an assault rifle. I believe it's an AR-15, which is the uh, the police version or the civilian version of the M16 automatic rifle that is used by the military, or it once was, not anymore. But it looks a lot like the regular Explorer interior, save for all that equipment. As you can see, the uh, the gear selectors on the steering column too. Ah, this is really cool. 
ballistic panel. That is actually uh, rated really highly in, so that it can uh, withstand the impact of armor-piercing bullets. Uh, you have that uh, factory-installed ballistic panel on both the driver and the front passenger doors, and it's really good to have, but it's not in the rear. So, well, let's just say I would prefer to be riding in the front seat or driving this vehicle, just in case. So looking at this rear, I mentioned earlier that this is a supervisor police car. It's not for actually arresting people. And here you see why there is no like cage separating the front seat occupants from the rear seat. And that uh, assault rifle is totally exposed on the gun rack. It's actually, you know, a fairly comfortable interior. You know, if you've ever been in the latest Ford Explorer, this was going to look awfully familiar to you, with the exception of the equipment you see right there. And I'll show you what those buttons do on the center console in just a few minutes. Yeah, there's that assault rifle just aiming towards the roof. Hopefully it won't go off and blow a hole through the roof. So apparently, Ford has claimed that nearly two-thirds of its police car sales are of this interceptor utility, as opposed to the Taurus. Why? Um, a lot of space inside. And like I said, this is like a mobile headquarters, and you can see the cameras on every single uh, side of the car, and they all go to that monitor right there, so the officers can see everything that's going on at a 360-degree uh, angle all around the car. It's really neat. And you see that lever right there on the A-pillar? That actually controls these LED uh, spotlights. And you'll see how bright those are shortly. Yeah, that's cool. There's ballistic protection right there. I believe there were actually some uh, serious armed robberies in the past where the uh, the robbers were literally firing at the police cars. I believe there was an incident in 1997 and the bullets just ripped the cars apart and that's why you have those ballistic panels now. So here you get a better uh, understanding why uh, this is a supervisor's car and not one you, you would actually arrest people in. No protection for the front seat occupants. There's also no headrests here uh, for the rear seats either. Uh, reason being is to increase visibility. Some, some of the equipment that you get in here, uh, well, the binoculars, uh, I guess are useful. If you want to use them for bird watching, whatever, they're there. And this here is really cool. This little bag of goodies uh, contains a big ass pair of uh, pliers that can you know cut industrial strength. Uh, wiring or steel, wiring, things like that. You got a couple of different types of axes there. You know, bust down doors if need be. And that's what makes this particular uh, interceptor utility cool because it has the uh, capabilities of having more and more equipment. Like I said, it's like a mobile headquarters. And again, you have all the storage space in here. And wait until you see the trunk in just a second where. You know, you really understand why police departments across the U.S. are loving these uh, interceptor utilities. It's just so much space inside, and combined with the, just this V6 engine here, it, this vehicle has a 1,620-pound payload capacity. Yeah, this is definitely a mobile headquarters. This unit here, it's really, really cool. It's very heavy. It's all metal, weighs almost... Uh, 
so it, it weighs several hundred pounds and it w costs almost four thousand dollars Pretty interesting stuff in here. I didn't even know what ever, all of it did, but you know, there's some very obvious things. You know, you're gonna have like that. You know, your fire extinguisher, uh, other things like you're gonna get a, bas a gas mask in here, fallout suit, uh, protective boots, some uh, crime scene tape there, perhaps even riot control gear. But it's really nice just how uh, well organized it is. Again, it's a mobile headquarters, so you just have to have so much equipment and communications equipment uh, available here. You could probably also put, you know, some flare guns, pepper spray, all that type of uh, police uh, equipment. Oh yeah, of course. You also need to have multiple power sources. Here, you know, this is just a smartphone, but just think of all the things that police officers might need to plug in. And this is the rear radio. This is neat because it's wired in directly to the main radio up front, and there's a lot of different channels here. Ah yes, and of course, the flashlights. Typically, there's three different settings. Uh, you know, the third one has just all the lights going. Ah, yeah, and there's that uh, LED spotlight I was telling you about earlier. And you just manually control it with that little lever right next to the steering wheel. And there's one on the uh, front passenger side as well. But it's really, really bright in person, let me tell you. Yeah, and controlling the flashlights, or uh, the flashers there, it's just that simple. Yep, this is the view I'm pretty used to, uh, used to seeing uh, police cars behind me. Just by pressing these buttons, uh, you, you know, you adjust the flashers, the frequency of them, and apparently there's 25 different flashlight uh, combination patterns that police departments can choose from, which is, you know, pretty cool. But overall, it's such just a, you know, it's a badass thing. I mean, when I was told that this was a supervisor car and it's a mobile headquarters, at first I was like, eh, you can't arrest anybody in it. But when you just see all the equipment that comes in there, it's literally a, a, you know, a police station on wheels. All right, everybody, uh, I'm out of time for today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Any more questions for me, leave them in the comments section below. And I got some really, really cool... Uh, Special CarBuzz unboxing reviews coming up for you, and stay tuned, and subscribe to the CarBuzz YouTube channel as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.